Who doesn't like Christmas? Or will it be a silent night? <laughs> As five strangers... <laughs> oh, the hell is that? Oh. Spend five days... cockle doo doo Success. Firing it up... <laughs> dishing it out... No one would ever know that. It's from a can. And taking each other down. It's game over. She can either eat this chicken or I'm gonna shove it down her throat. I'm watching you. They'll score in secret in an all-out food fight. I am. I'm risking it all right here. Mama's cooking. I really want to win. For a $1,000 grand prize and the bragging rights of host with the most. Winners and losers. Ah, I forgot nothing, so I'm ready. We're in Bradford, Ontario, kicking off a new round of dinner parties, starting with tonight's host, Sarah Meredith, a 33-year-old with a crafty side business. I love making gift baskets. How, um... Uh, Country bunkin? Does that work? <laughs> not quite. Ball of fun? How's that? <laughs> I was gonna say boring. I can't say I'm boring, by any means. No, but I can. I clash with arrogant personalities. And Scrooges. Because tonight, Sarah plans to celebrate her favorite holiday ever. My theme for this competition is Christmas. In July. So that's the beauty of it. It's a surprise. But not for long, because the snowmen, snowflakes, and stockings are a bit of a dead giveaway. I'm hoping that there's going to be a Santa Claus and that I'm going to get to sit on his lap. Meet the host of Tomorrow Night, Rick Sim, a 29-year-old former fatty turned fitness freak with a plan to finish first. I will charm the piss out of them tomorrow and get great scores, and then I'm going to drink my face off for the rest of the week. But he'll have to get through tonight and Sarah's dessert, chocolate pie. How Christmassy. I've been told it's better than sex. Wow. I'm not wowed. What if I told you it had a graham cracker crust? I hope they crushed up their own graham crackers. Negative on that. Is this a joke? Introducing the host of the midweek meal, 52-year-old uppity property manager Don Muzo, a woman with high heels and even higher standards. I go to all the beautiful restaurants in Toronto, North America, all over the world, and I have a gift. I will eat a dish and I will duplicate it at home. But you don't need a posh palate to figure out Sarah's pie filling is a simple mixture of sugar, flour, 1% milk, and grated chocolate. Then Sarah takes three egg yolks, tempers it with the heated chocolate to thicken up the mixture, and stirs. Oh, it smells like heaven. If you've got pie in the sky hopes for your next dinner party, go to wnetwork.com for Sarah's simple chocolate fix. Nothing is better than chocolate. They're crazy if they don't like chocolate. They like chocolate. I am not the biggest fan of chocolate. Says the host of the fifth and final night, 29-year-old Dustin Morrison, a b-ball player who courts competition wherever he goes. If I'm walking down the street and say there's somebody just, just to the right of me, just in front of me, I'll match them stride for stride, and then I'll try and beat them to the corner, but they don't know I'm in a race with them. Weirdo. Is that a weird thing? Yes, but then again, so is kicking off a supposedly Christmas dinner party by serving bruschetta topped with mozzarella cheese. <laughs> like, really? This is so simple. Not if it's from scratch. I have, can honestly say nothing is processed and it's all homemade. Except for the store-bought bread and the bottle of salad dressing. I think I'm pretty good. Think again. Anybody with a knife a baguette, a tomato, and half a brain can whip up bruschetta. Boo-hoo! Why don't you just give me my money now? That's the host of Night 4, 49-year-old Eddie Gal, a proud Hungarian tool and die maker who likes the simple things in life, like dancing, bowling, shooting some pool, and guy things like skirt watching. Skirts? They're called women, you Neanderthal. Women watching. Really? Next. You asked for it. Sarah's main course is Asiago and artichoke chicken with potatoes and green beans. It's chicken. It's not even stuffed with anything. I like chicken, but it's not my favorite. Yeah, but then you've probably never had chicken sold out of the back of a trailer. Hey, how are you today? I'm good, how are you? 
Good. Do you happen to have some organic chicken breast for me? Certainly. How many would you like? Can I have five, please? The boneless, skinless ones, yes, right? Yes, please. Now, these are off of capons. Capons are a free-range chicken. It's a much better chicken than a regular old chicken that you're going to get at the store, which is nothing more than locked up in a barn and minor out in grass eating bugs. Mmm, insecty. Oh, my goodness gracious me. Sarah heads home with her free-range breasts and starts in on her tri-colored potatoes. This is a very festive. I tried to find red potatoes, white potatoes, and purple potato. Fancy. I'm not sure what they're called. They're still potatoes. Maybe the potatoes will be fries. I love fries. Even better, they're going to be roasted. I hate roasted potatoes. Suck it up, buttercup. And besides, you're not getting much anyway. I use four potatoes per person. Whoa, way to break the bank, Sarah. I don't want to keep looking at this. This is terrible. Oh, keep your hair on, because it's not as bad as you think. Sarah's got a secret sauce to spruce up the spuds. And I'm going to use onion soup mix. Julia Child would be so proud. I tried to make almost everything out of scratch. <laughs> no one's laughing, Sarah. The pie is made from scratch. That is impressive. And so is the very last thing on the menu. Guest note, in lieu of a host gift, bring something for a secret Santa gift exchange. Well, what am I supposed to get? Beats me. For somebody. You've never met. A candle? I hope I don't get a candle. They sound crazy. <laughs> Let's get this Christmas party started. Coming up on Come Dine With Me, the guests get catty. I think this is her ashes. Absolutely bizarre. And hungry. You guys are really going to fill up on that mat. <laughs> it's the first night of a five-day dinner party competition, and Sarah thinks her Christmas theme will make her the ho-ho host with the most. I'm liking this. I'm going to have them in the Christmas spirit before you know it. Especially when they find the marshmallows and chocolate treats. But it looks like it's going to be a blue Christmas with that top. Well, at least it'll match Don's bloodline. Calm down, Sarah. Sarah was happy and energetic. That's because it's Christmas. Put your present down by the tree. It's not Christmas. Try telling Sarah that. I'm speechless. I'm sorry. It's It was just... Festive? Overwhelming. Oh. This is very interesting. It's it, um, always Christmas here? It's not always Christmas here, but it's one of my favorite holidays, so I figured, hey, why not? Wow. <laughs> Let's see if you're still laughing after a candy cane martini. Yes. It's a little, um, like cough syrup? Just cough syrup? Mixed with turpentine. I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm sorry. But... No, it's all good. For you, maybe. I thought I was going to die. And next guest, Dustin, is dying to get the party started. Hi, oh. Sarah. I'm Dustin. Nice I'm to meet saying. you. Yeah, Come well. on in. Perfect. I'm like, oh, this is real. Like, this is happening. Like, let's do it. Great. Now, Baldy, meet Blondie. This is Dawn. Hi, Justin. Nice to meet you. Pleasure. My first impression was I'd do her. Well, give it your best shot, lover boy. So how do you know the host? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. Come on. <laughs> OK. Dude, what happened? I guess I kind of just blacked out. Best save that for Sarah's one of a kind. Candy cane martini. All right. That's how I like it. Shake it, not stir it, right? Uh, just drink it. <laughs> it's very, I know, it's very minty. I know. Then stop serving it. I think Sarah's going to get on my nerves this week. I think uh, we're going to get along just great. Maybe she'll have better luck with mullet man Eddie. My name's Eddie. I'm Sarah. Very nice, nice to, meet to meet you. I felt a little nervous. Steady, Eddie. Eddie, this is Dustin. Nice to meet you. And this Eddie. is nice Dawn. Hi. Very Pleasure. nice to meet you. Pleasure, Eddie. Very good. The pleasure's all his. So her hair caught my eye right away. I was like blonde. Gotta love it. Yep, looks like a great group so far. Guess who's number five? I say more yeah. testosterone. No, I think the next person coming around is gonna be a 27-year-old girl. Not necessarily hot, not necessarily not. You have two hotties. It's true. <laughs> There's definitely, there's definitely two hotties here, but I think uh, it's me and Eddie. But umpa. He's got a good sharp, sharp edge on him. But there's nothing like a sharp-dressed man. Enter Rick. Hi, hey, I'm going? Sarah. 
Hey, I'm Rick. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. In this competition, I will use absolutely anything to my advantage. Think it's gonna work. Ooh, we got a hottie! Yeah. <laughs> no drooling, Don. When I get excited, I go like this. You mean like a bunny? I mean, we all know what bunnies do <laughs> and what they're known for. Maybe she posed as a bunny when she was younger, too. Better than posing for a mugshot. Eddie looks like a serial killer. <laughs> who, just like everyone else, loves opening a secret Santa gift. Oh, a happy Merry Christmas forever, Paul! I thought the gift exchange was a wonderful idea. I got some mustaches. Might as well shave my beard. Uh, I got a centipede-shaped ice cube tray. <laughs> I've got a good one, too. I like this one. Ice melts. It was fun. Nice one, Sarah. I feel good about my party so far. Great. Let's hope they like your bruschetta appetizer. I can cook. And cut corners. This is mozzarella cheese. It did come pre-shredded for time purposes. But there's nothing to say I can't shred my own cheese. Ah, uh, once it's melted, no one will ever know. As long as you keep it under your hat. Wow. Check out all these hats. <gasps> She's like the crazy hat lady. <laughs> I just thought it was absolutely bizarre. It was weird. Like you're not totally loving it. <laughs> I am. Gee, I've got a headache. I'm not sure what it could be. <laughs> Rick's hilarious. But it's time to put this whole thing to rest, kids, because Tiggy is tired. Good night, kitty cat. Dead tired. Ooh, what do we got over here? Oh, just your everyday cat shrine. Cat hair and cat paws, cat prints. Cat everything. I've never seen anything like this. This is Tiggy, November 1994. He died just last year. I think this is her ashes. That's super crazy. Super duper crazy. Okay, I'm a little creeped out. It's like that cemetery in here. <laughs> You're <laughs> right. Just yeah. get the heck out of here. Let's go wash our hands. Yeah, because the appetizer is almost ready. It smells awesome. Sarah sprinkles on some Parmesan cheese to give it... A snowy effect. And for the holly effect, some green parsley and red cherry tomato. And Sarah's Christmas bruschetta is ready to serve. I'm gonna sneak in between two gentlemen. It smells delicious. Hope you're not hungry. You guys are really gonna fill up on that, man. <laughs> two little pieces of bread. Oh, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> I know it's a light appetizer. I plan on stuffing you with a gigantic meal. Thanks. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, besides, everyone knows it's not the size that counts. There wasn't even that much to eat in two bites. I was already done. I think it's absolutely fantastic that you did not over crisp the bread. And what else did you think, Dawn? I need to come over next week and show her how to make bruschetta. <laughs> Did you make the bread yourself? Unfortunately, I didn't make the bread myself. Okay, I was just curious. And maybe just a teensy bit disappointed. I wasn't really impressed. But at least you kept that to yourself. I think it's an appetizer that a lot of other people could make, you know? I don't know if you challenged yourself enough on this one. Well, now we all know who the mean one is. They think I'm a dick, I'll be a dick <laughs> throughout the rest of the week. That's fine. Ah, uh, they just don't know you yet. I work at a restaurant as a food expediter. I also do, uh research for the news, and I'm a production assistant for uh, sports broadcasts. Three jobs. Hmm. He's unemployed. <laughs> no, that would be Rick. I'm a freelance uh, theater artist, so I do, um, I perform and I um, do some tour directing. Cool. Yeah, that'd be nothing to me. Well, he doesn't need to impress you anyway. I live with my boyfriend. We've been together for four years. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. it's great. Uh, he's a great guy. That's yeah. when I realized right away that um, uh, he's gay. Can't get anything by Eddie. What about you, Don? What, uh, what keeps you busy during the day? I'm a property manager. Oh. Yes. And I manage my own properties. And that's not all. I actually am uh, a design engineer in the telephony industry. Whatever that means. I have a high-end cottage in the Muskokas. And oh, wait, there's more. As well as a penthouse that I rent on an executive level. Wow, impressive. I wanted to hate her for it. I did. Coming up on Come Dine With Me, Will Sarah pull a fast one? Such a cop-out. It's the first night of the competition, and tonight's host is socially awkward Sarah. It's not the type of people that I normally 
hang around with. But she does have nice breasts. I wanted to do something that was close to, like, doing a turkey for Christmas, so I figured chicken, next best thing. I am fearsome that the artichoke and Asiago chicken, that she's opening up a tin and throwing the dip. You know, you can buy oh, the dip. Oh, no, no. It's artichoke <laughs> and Asiago dip. Oh, she wouldn't do that. Oh. I made most of my meal from scratch. <laughs> the chicken goes back into the oven along with the roasted potatoes, and now there's nothing left to do but wait. And wait, and wait some more. Hope they're hungry. Try famished. I'm really hungry, so right about now, really? I would uh, yeah. I would take anything. I was starving. We yeah. haven't seen Sarah for an hour. If only there was something you could eat. I had some snowman poop there. And then we had some chocolate bars. We can make s'mores. Wouldn't that be rude? <laughs> it's survival of the fittest. Then s'mores it is. Mmm. Mmm, that actually was really good. I thought it was brilliant. Mm, good. It's really good. Would you like some? Oh. Uh, mm, mm. Just glad to get some food in my mouth. Too bad there's nothing to wash it down with. Tongues are starting to hang out. I feel like I've been in a desert the whole time. Not happy, huh? No, not at all. Well, Rick seems perfectly content. <laughs> na, 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 na. <laughs> Very mature. And it's all mine. Oh, it's <laughs> Well, on the bright side, the main's almost ready. Sarah adds beans to the plate, and Asiago and artichoke chicken is ready to serve. Finally. That looks this delicious. Thank you. Oh, mm. yeah. Very nice. Isn't it, though? The presentation of the main course was very simple. Whiner. Would it be possible oh, to, to get another? Drink. Yes, that would Absolutely. Be... Oh, Sarah. <sighs> These people really like to drink. Dinner party 101, like keep the glass full. Is everyone in the Christmas spirit? Yes. Oh gosh, Absolutely. yes. Okay, Absolutely. that's good. Hope everyone enjoys. And please, try to keep it down. All I heard was people crunching on their beans. And criticizing the potatoes. The purple potatoes are really strange. Strange good? I didn't like the potatoes at all. You have good ingredients here, like the chicken, uh, with the Asiago, it works pretty well with the artichokes. Well, that's positive. I think the sauce is spectacular. And my question is, did you make that from scratch? I didn't make the sauce from scratch. I wish I did. Join the club. Bad uh, girl. You can't do that. Competition? Such a cop out. So much for the Christmas spirit. So let me ask you, Dustin, what was the most interesting or worst Christmas present you've ever received? This one Christmas Eve, all of a sudden, I see my dad run out of the house right into the garage because there was a bunch of guys breaking into our house, taking all the Christmas presents. Oh, my what? God. OMG is right. Dustin's Christmas story was a little weird. So what's your best gift? Then? My best gift? Bad, I'll best tell you about Christmas. a gift. It was a Santa Claus sitting up, and then it had a flap on him, and it says, open for your Santa Claus surprise, right? <laughs> and he opened it, and guess what fell out? What? What do you think? <laughs> There's a big boner. <laughs> I thought I was gonna bust a gut. I love that he said boner. Coming up on Come Dine With Me, Sarah gives it her best shot. Yay! Yay! It was vile. But will she get whipped? <laughs> Tonight, Sarah thinks she can best the rest with her final course. I'm hoping my dessert will put it over the top. Big words for a girl just serving pie. Mmm, chocolate pie. Topped with homemade whipped cream. Well, that's not going well. What's wrong? It's not working. Say again. This is not working. <laughs> Sheesh, someone's cranky. Come on. I say it's going to thicken now? Nope. <laughs> desperate times call for desperate measures. What are you doing? Dun, 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 dun. Canned whipped cream? Secret weapon. Sarah, I wouldn't do that if I were you. It's too late now. <laughs> it's already done. Oh, well. Sarah's chocolate pie with <clears throat> homemade whipped cream is ready to eat. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yummers.
If I was in a restaurant and that was served to me, I would send it back. Please enjoy. Oh, they're trying. I was just telling myself, just chew and swallow, chew and swallow. I'm not a dessert eater, and I'm not a sweet eater. You're not the only one. The consistency is throwing me off a little bit. Hmm, wonder why. It tasted like a really bad, like, container of pudding that you left in the back of your fridge for, like, three months. Come on, there must be something good about it. I really liked the graham cracker uh, crumb crust. Did you make the pie filling as yes, well? Yes, I did. Oh, I made the hand. It's all made by hand. All of it handmade, eh? Oh, yes, all by hand. Every last inch of it. Yes, totally, by hand. The white whipping, too? Everything is all homemade? Unfortunately, the white whipping is the one thing I didn't get a chance to make. I tried. To get away with it, you mean? She tried pulling a fast one. Sneaky! <laughs> Sarah, what were you thinking? What possessed you to throw the Christmas party? Definitely wanted to do Christmas because Christmas makes you feel like a kid again at any age. Right now, I feel like I'm about uh, six. I got chocolate in front of me. And... Please, don't remind them. Here's to night one. Cheers. Cheers. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Thank goodness it's finally over. I'm hoping my scores will be around a seven or an eight. Oh, Sarah. Sarah, I think you're a really sweet girl, but I think you're in over your head just a little tiny bit. So tonight, I'm giving you a six. I'm giving Sarah a six. Santa's elves don't buy canned Asiago. I'm giving Sarah a six. I'm gonna give her a six. So those four sixes put Sarah's final score at 24 points, and the competition is on. I got this in the bag. I didn't come here to lose. I'm gonna just kill the competition. Bang, bang, bang. I am absolutely pumped for tomorrow. I can't wait. On the next episode... Let's get silly. Hats off to Rick. Arr. <laughs> at his East Coast supper. The best way to do it is kind of like you're breaking someone's neck. Who will strap it on? Ah! And who will clam up? Ah, I had to pee in my pants! Out of control. Out of control. At the down-home kitchen, Kaylee. Coming up on Come Dine With Me... Ew. Will an East Coast dinner party... Uh, you guys want to go for a swim? <laughs> go south? I'm risking it all right here. I'm risking it all. As five strangers... What the hell is... Ah! Ah! Spend five days... <laughs> cock doo 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 Success. Firing it up... <gasps> dishing it out... No one would ever know that. It's from a can. And taking each other down. It's game over. She can either eat this chicken or I'm gonna shove it down her throat. I'm watching you. They'll score in secret in an all-out food fight. I am. Oh, mama's cooking. I really want to win. For a $1,000 grand prize and the bragging rights of host with the most. Winners and losers. I'm gonna make them love me. It's the second day of a week-long dinner dust-up, and tonight's host is Rick, a full-time actor who's always camera-ready. I work out about five times a week. Freak. I wouldn't call myself a freak, but yeah, maybe. <laughs> no, no, you actor types are totally down to earth. I played an alien, um, I played a police officer, I played a pirate, <laughs> uh, the list goes on. Wow, how glamorous. Yeah, it's uh, not always pretty. <laughs> Blah, blah, blah. Yep, talk is cheap to someone like Don. She's the high-class hostess of tomorrow night and is confident she's going to be even richer at the end of the week. I am going to teach my group what a real dinner party is supposed to be. I'm a born natural. Winner. Oh, he's a winner, all right. The Hungarian with the rubbery legs is Eddie, who hosts on night four. A real tool and die man by trade, who thinks he'll waltz right into the winner's circle. Watch and learn and, and beat him. I've never really uh, anticipated losing to a guy with a mullet and a mustache. That trash talker is the final night's host, Dustin, who thinks he's a slam dunk. I'm betting on myself this week, I guarantee a win. Well, hopeful's one thing, but delusional's another. Meet last night's host, Sarah. My favorite moment last night was when everyone cheers me and told me I did such a good job. Aww. Poor thing. I really like her. 
And that's the only nice thing anyone has to say about Sarah's Christmas celebration, which scored a paltry 24 points. Thought it was cheesy. And so dry. I feel like I've been in a desert the whole time. Wasn't enough booze. Where, where was it? I don't know. Sarah forgot to buy wine. But she did remember to stock up on store-bought ingredients. I set the bar. And fit as a fiddle, Kate Bretner Rick is ready to jump right over it, with a little help from his East Coast friends. Uh, you guys want to go for a swim? <laughs> I'm killing some lobster today. For his main of lobster and tenderloin skewers. That sounds pretty delicious. Very nice. Very nice. I'm looking forward to having some good lobster. Great. But to do that, unfortunately, they all have to die. I feel really bad for him. Because they're not going quietly. This guy's a bit of a fighter. Poor Lobby. <laughs> I want him to die as quickly as possible. Sadist. I'm good with that. <laughs> yeah, man, it's cool. Yeah, they're looking good. Even better when you get the meat out of the tails. At least I think. Like, what the heck is that? I have no clue what it is. Uh, it's just a little liver and lungs. Makes me want to gag. I'm just going to clean it all out. Good idea. I don't want any of that on there. Rick, you're a cut above, that's for sure. I really haven't built any impressions about it yet. Rick would make a great girlfriend. Yep, he really knows how to handle a piece of meat. That sounds like sweet love. After Rick sears the tenderloin, all that's left to do is put this surf and turf together on some skewers, since he'll finish cooking them just before serving. Woohoo! Which means he can get moving on the sides. Blue cheese, mashed potatoes, and fiddleheads. I like fiddleheads. I'm not too familiar with fiddleheads. I, is, that a, is that part of a fish head? No, it's a fern. I chose fiddleheads because they're different. A lot of people haven't tried them. Um, they're an Atlantic vegetable as well, so it keeps with my theme. I'm not even sure if they're in season right now. They're not. People are probably gonna get because they're frozen, but they can kiss my Ooh, testy. Bye, fiddleheads. They'll be sautéed just before serving. Here's hoping. If you want to find out about Rick's totally easy East Coast recipes, go to wnetwork.com. If someone doesn't like seafood, I'm <laughs> Totally, because his app is full of it. Seafood chowder. I'm making a fish chowder. Uh-oh. That's not good. I've never made chowder. Aw, uh, it's easy. All you got to do is cut up haddock. Haddock is the classic chowder fish. It's uh, pretty much in, in any seafood chowder you get in Cape Breton. And some other seafood. I think probably shrimp. Give that man a cigar. Yes, shrimp and scallops. I'm excited. I think it's going to be delicious. Aw, Rick is getting all verklempt. Yeah, I'm getting emotional. <laughs> oh, it must be the onions. It's not even the onions that are making me emotional. It's just thinking of home. Faker. It was hokey. Yeah, but he does know how to hold an audience. One word, bacon. I do like bacon. Who doesn't? I want the bacon fat for my chowder. I want it to cook. I want all the fat to come out of it. And I'm going to set the bacon aside when it's done and use it as a garnish for later. Rick puts potatoes in the bacon fat, adds condensed milk, cream, and plops in the seafood. That's perfect. Yeah, nice and creamy. Just smear it all over my body and moisturize it. Don, you tease. I'm looking forward to flirt with her a little bit more tonight. I'm looking forward to seeing where that goes. Really? I can do a little bit better than Eddie. But he's so sweet. Just like Rick's dessert, a down-home favorite, Blueberry Grunt. I don't know what the hell that is. It's not that, Eddie. I would have to say that it's probably some kind of crumble dish. Nope. It's essentially um, a boiled dumpling that's boiled in blueberries and served with fresh cream. And it has to be served hot, so Rick is going to prepare it before serving. And seeing as how it's an East Coast dinner party, there's a dress code. Okay, plaid. I'd like to see what Don's gonna wear. <laughs> I don't have any little schoolgirl outfits to wear. Dinner better be good if I have to wear plaid. Who's gonna win? You are, you are. Is my... <laughs> are you going to be delicious? Yes, sir. <laughs> Coming up on Come Dine With Me, Suds, Sailors... Hey, Skipper. <laughs> <laughs> and some serious sweating. I'm not a seafood person. Tonight, 
Rick's confident that his East Coast themed dinner party will be tough to beat. I am definitely going to win. But he's taking no chances. The perfect table setting, there you go, and the perfect outfit to boot. Ahoy matey! He's ready to extend a big howdy ho to his first man on deck. Rockin' the plaid, here's Eddie. Hi. Hey, Eddie, how's How it going? How are you doing? Good evening. Thanks How very much for the invite. Hey, thanks for, for coming in. Come on All in. All right, thanks. Cheers. I felt good. Now, how's about we get you feeling a little better? I've got a sparkling wine cocktail or uh -huh. uh, a beer, if you want, whichever you prefer. I like the beer. Have the, the beer, beer's man. gonna feel good. So good. All right, there you go, man. Thanks very much. Cheers. Cheers. The beer hit the right spot. And Rick's got something for your bald spot, too. I'm gonna get let you take your pick. I'm gonna be the pirate. I love it. All right. Oh, yeah, cool. It goes with my hair. The remnants, you mean. Har. <laughs> Keep your hair on, because ye fair maiden Dawn has arrived. Hi. Hey, Dawn. How are you? Nice Looking to good. see you again. Oh, I was very excited about day two. Well, welcome aboard. So you can pick whichever one you like. That's yeah, the, yeah, black the fisherman? One. All right. How much fun is this? Okay, where's my pole? Now you're talking Eddie's language. Oh, man. Easy, Eddie. He's harmless. So harmless. And yet so dignified. Let's get her yeah. smashed. I was thinking oh, that, too. Oh, excuse me. Ew. At least I didn't burp right at her face. Well, speaking of spewing hot air, Doofus Dustin's here. Hey, hey. how's it going, Dustin? Come on Good. in. Good. How you doing, you old blue Good. Dozer? Thanks for having a nice shirt, man. It's plaid. I was going to wear a different plaid shirt. But I ended up spilling a bottle of cologne on it. Cologne, hey, wonder who that's for. Hello, shake, hello. shake, shake. Mm -hmm. Hey, Don is still doable. I don't trust Dustin, and I can't put my finger on it. Well, he's no Captain Steubing. No, I'm gonna take the uh, little captain's hat. Hey, Skipper. <laughs> Eyes the bye. It's a big East Coast party. At least it's not Christmas. So, what are your thoughts on last night? I think the bar was set pretty low. I do like Sarah, and I think she's a really Absolutely. has a really good heart, and she's a really nice person. Absolutely. But I just think maybe a dinner party is not her cup of tea. Really? By the looks of Sarah's plaid hat, she enjoys a good spot of tea. Hey, how's it going? I love your hat. You look awesome. I had no idea what he had in store for us. Well, since you brought your own hat, perhaps some post-party pandering? What were your thoughts? You were happy? Good overall. Oh, good. I still think I've got a pretty good chance at winning. Oh, my goodness. Really? Really? Let it go, Don. Just let it go. Here's to another great night, and more importantly, here is to a competition. Cheers. Cheers. To competition. 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 Yeah. Yay. Hats off to you, Rick. I feel like I'm off to a great start. But you might want to stop what's going on in your bedroom. So, I guess this is where the magic happens? This is where the action happens. Yes. Eddie. That was rude. Oh, look at little Miss Prudy Pants going through the host's personal possessions. Uh, rings? What do you do with these? Well, not this. No. No, 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 no. Or this. I'm gonna tie you up right now Where and just do you. Just do you. I wish it was done. <laughs> well, she's busy browsing the vitamin aisle with Dustin. Who is this guy? I thought I knew him last night. Rick had a collection of supplements and proteins and powders and potions. Oh, what is that? Highly concentrated formula. Extreme energy pump and vascularity. Oh. I wonder what this is for. I bet she gets his pump on. <laughs> you know. You're blowing it, buddy. Big time. He's creeping me out a little bit. <laughs> what the hell's happening? Rick's garnishing his chowder. I just want to get the bacon right. I'm choosing the crispiest pieces. Rick tops the soup with crispy bacon and green onion. Looking good. Presentation is super important. It's got to look perfect. So we see. Aren't they beautiful? Let's just do it. It's time. Rick's seafood chowder is ready to serve. I hope you're hungry. Yes. Thank you, you. The presentation was absolutely beautiful. Excellent. Oh, that's Yay. lovely. Wow. So enjoy. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Time to chow down on the chowder. I'm a huge seafood lover. This is excellent. Oh, thank you. I really uh, found the appetizer quite tasty. Tasty enough to please Ms. Five Star Restaurants? This is flipping fantastic. Oh, thank you so much, Don. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Could it be Don's impressed? It was packed with the perfect sized seafood bites. It was 
flavorful. That would be the dead pig. I really like how you have the, the bacon that has a little smokiness to it. You know, it gives a little more texture, a little flavor to it, the crunchiness. Phenomenal. Great job. He hit a home run with the appetizer. He nailed it 100, 110%. Wow, you too, Eddie? I'm not a seafood person, but this dish is one of the best seafoods I've ever had. Not one catty comment. Go, Rick. I have to say that to Rick, you remind me of a jaguar. Huh? He's the jaguar of the group. OK. I didn't understand that. You remind me of a sleek cat that is well kept. And oh, thank you. uh, you've got the eyes of a cat. So as you say, my heart's fluttering. So is the cougars. Brrr. You remember a TV show where this fellow had this big white parrot? Yeah. And it was just burr, 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 talking all the time and moving. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah, man, it's just like a what? <laughs> I can't wait. Like, how did you? No. How did you? Apparently, I'm a parrot. It's true. Sarah does just, she doesn't shut up. Except for maybe now. She looked a little offended. Way to go, Eddie. If I'm going to think of you as an animal, I picture you as a sloth. A sloth? But he acts like a sloth. So... <laughs> I have no idea what a sloth is. Oh, Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love him. Gotta love him. Coming up on Come Dine With Me, Dawn gets dirty. Right now, I have a party in my mouth. And the guests have a ball. <laughs> It's night two, and after one dish, Clean Cut Rick is planning on getting dirty with his competition. I think I'm just going to keep the drinks flowing, try and get him drunk, and uh, see what happens. Oh, it be happening. Eddie. He's dying. <laughs> Sorry, man. You're going to cut the beer burps. You sure do. So apparently beer is not the thing to be serving to uh, Eddie. If you burp again, I'm going to poke you with the fork. Not a fan, hey, Don? It's gross. It was some entertainment. Oh, yeah, so entertaining. Who invited him? <laughs> I need to know. Oh, no. You're Try. laughing at me. Because <laughs> you're funnier than <laughs> It's easy to laugh at him. I'm laughing so loud, I got to pee a key. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. I'm going to pee in my bed. <laughs> Our group is insane is getting along a little too well. Excellent. Everything is going according to plan, eh, Rick? By the sounds of this, I think I'm going to do really good. I want him to keep laughing so I can keep cooking. His frozen fiddleheads. These fiddleheads are like gold, and I'm risking it all right here. I'm risking it all. Don't fret. As long as your potatoes are better than Eddie's booger nuggets, you're golden. I need these potatoes to be warm. And they're not. And neither is the wine reduction. I'm not putting it back in the pot, so I'm going to put it in my car. But no one's going to know. <coughs> nice play, Deep Throat. Rick Jackson pollocks his reduction, plops on some lukewarm mashed potatoes, plates his surf and turf skewers, fiddleheads, tops off with Bernay sauce, and the main course is ready to serve. Woo, wonderful. Like always, ladies first. Aww. Thank you very much. It looked beautiful. He couldn't have played it better if he tried. Too bad Eddie's not the superficial type. The fiddleheads just didn't look appetizing. Delicious. They were really good. Fine, you eat them. Very subtle, Ed. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. OK, I have to ask, what what, what just happened? Uh, <laughs> Eddie those, is those, sharing those his food. Those things are a little bit scary. I don't know, the green things. <laughs> I'm not sure into green things. But <laughs> I, guess, I honestly have no idea why he did that. Because now Rick's all frowny. They're not that bad. Besides that, oh, it's very fantastic, marvelous. Oh, really? Thank you so much. He's not buying it. The red wine reduction. Like, it tastes really nice when you mix it with the beef and even the lobster. Like, it actually works extremely well. Yeah, that's kind of the point. Right now, I have a party in my mouth. <laughs> but the potatoes are a pooper. My potatoes are cold. Yeah. And I'm so sad. Boo-hoo. Isn't that sad? It's a little sad. Not really, but this is. I find is the potatoes to be a little bit spicy, and I, I don't do very well with spice. Wimp. The potatoes weren't a big hit. But that's OK. Rick's got a game to take away the pain. <laughs> All right, each person has 30 seconds 
Whoever has the most points takes home this bottle of wine. All right, I'll give you a demonstration. Please don't. You come out with a toy to strap onto us and swing your hips. She sold. Oh, I'll go first. Oh, where's the rhythm? Got Get the rhythm. some rhythm. You need rhythm. <laughs> Back off. That's your method. Yeah. Oh, almost oh. got. We got. Whoa. Good one, Sarah. Let's see if Don's got game. And go. Come on, Don. Oh. Come on, Don. A tisket, a tasket, and put it in the basket. I think I was thrusting too hard. Think again. Yeah. Don's got a great swing. She's doing the windmill. <laughs> it was fun watching her swing your hips. It was pretty sexy. Your next chrome dome. Go. Okay. <laughs> Off the wall. Oh. <laughs> It's all about the rhythm, Dustin. And the fact that he didn't do it, yay. And boo, Eddie's up. I think I got a pretty good swing to my hips. Oh, you're a swinger, all right. <laughs> Get some rhythm. Come on, Eddie. Oh! <laughs> yeah, laugh. Oh. Angela. Angela, oh, we got a winner. And it's Sarah. I think I've got rhythm. Of course you do, Eddie. Okay. Coming up on Come Dine With Me, will Rick's grunt get the guests groaning? <laughs> I'm done. It's night two, and so far, actor Rick has been putting on quite a performance. Right now, um, I feel good, but not too overconfident. Good, because he still has to perform his last act, the blueberry grunt dessert. I have no idea what grunt is. What is it? I'm My dog fish, fish out of water. Pie? Pie? I say cake. Well, you'd all be wrong. Blueberry grunt is as old as Nova Scotia. What it is, it's a boiled dumpling in, um, boiled in blueberries. And to make his dumplings, Rick mixes melted butter with flour, adds cream, and stirs. Easy peasy. This is looking good. And even better in the pot. But what's cool about it is it's actually cooked in the blueberries, so it makes it awesome. And even awesomer are Rick's presentation skills. That's right, a martini glass. It's looking good. It's looking good. I really uh, hope they like it. Rick's blueberry grunt is ready to serve. All right, here you are. Oh, wow, you. Look at that. thank You're you. Welcome. I loved it in the martini glass. That was a nice touch. You just want to get right in there, dig in, and enjoy. Oh, they're digging it, all right. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah. Wow, that was quick. It was delicious. I have now decided you are going to be my new BFF. <laughs> really? He can make this for me when after we come home from shopping. Oh, isn't that sweet? I need your number. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, anytime. You said that you're into acting. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that you've picked the wrong career. I think you should have just been a chef. It was ex excellent. Oh. Aww. Everything flowed together really well. Awesome. I thought it was delicious. Those are some rave reviews, but there's always that one critic. So I can't really say I, I, I care for the hot desserts very much. Not cool. End of night two, everyone. Thank you so much for coming to my house, and here's to a great rest of the week. Cheers. 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 Job well done. Cheers. Very well done. Ah, praise. Music to an actor's ears. I don't think I could have done it any better. Rick, you raised the bar. We now have a competition. So right now, I'm giving you an eight. I'm gonna give you a nine. Tonight, I'm giving Rick an eight. I did enjoy the food, but I was not wowed. So I'm gonna give Rick a seven. So the actor easily goes to the top of the bill with 32 points. But can he be upstaged? I gotta get that Rick a bastard. <laughs> There's no way I'm not going to win this. I am going to have to turn Dawn on, take my deep, deep breaths, and run. On the next episode of Come Dine With Me... I'm still in this to win it. Let's go. There's hair do's and hair don'ts. Business in the front, party in the back. As Dawn opens her treasure chest... Stop staring at my... And Rick does damage. Are we in China? Because these cutlery are on the wrong side of the plate. I'm throwing up in my mouth a little right now. <laughs> oh, Lord, help us all. Coming up on Come Dine With Me... I am going to step it up a notch. Will a posh party... Oh, delicious. Some people are intimidated by shishi. End up in the gutter? Stop staring at my... <laughs> look at me in the eyes, okay? <laughs>
as five strangers spend five days firing it up and taking each other down. It's game over. She can either eat this chicken or I'm gonna shove it down her throat. I'm throwing up in my mouth a little right now. I'm watching you. They'll score each other in secret in an all-out food fight. Yeah. I really want to win. For a $1,000 grand prize and the bragging rights of host with the most. Winners and losers. And the award goes to... It's day three, and tonight's hostess is Dawn, a hot housewife who lives life in the fast lane. Well, I've been to the Oscars, and I've met a lot of celebrities. How's that for lip service? Women with lip injections can't whistle. Put your money where your mouth is. <whistles> well, aren't you special? I fake it a lot. So evil. That's tomorrow night's host, Eddie, who thinks he's just a hop, skip, and a jump away from the grand prize. I can't lose. I'm Hungarian. He's, a, he's an odd guy. He's a character. Says the final night's host, Dustin, a straight shooter who's not afraid to court a little controversy. These suckers don't stand a chance. They're terrible. I think Dustin's starting to show his true colors. Well, Sarah definitely showed hers on night one when she served a Christmas-themed dinner party that was anything but jolly. Santa, all I want for Christmas is $1,000. Would you settle for a lump of coal? Because Sarah only scored 24 points, which was easily beat last night by Rick's East Coast-themed dinner party. I think everything went uh, pretty close to perfect last night. Yep, hats off to you, Rick. Everyone definitely had a ball. <laughs> Lots of laughs. And lots of booze, but few manners. If you burp again, I'm gonna poke you with the fork. Thank God for Eddie. Quite a character. Says Blandy McBland Bland. I find is the potatoes to be a little bit spicy, and I, I don't do very well with spice. But overall... This is flipping fantastic. I am pretty sure that Don is gonna be my competition. Because Don's going high class and high end. Tonight's going to be she-she. Yep, that figures. What, do you have a beef with that? Do you have any beef tenderloin today? Absolutely. I got a nice, beautiful, grain-fed tenderloin right here. Very swanky. That sounds like something I would definitely enjoy. You mean, if you could afford it. I thought I'd spoil my guests. Which is why Don's making two sauces for her tenderloin. A blue cheese sauce, a peppercorn sauce. You can have them both. Lucky them. I don't care for either blue cheese or peppercorn sauce. Eddie does. Nice, spicy like Don. Ah, Eddie's got a crush. Hey, he's just so, like, bizarre. <laughs> Speaking of which... Who would I like to grind? <laughs> My favorite guy, Mr. Dustin. <laughs> well, hey, never say never. Never say never. Yep, anything can happen. I have never managed not to boil over. She's probably frozen right now. Because she still has to make the sides, veggie kebabs, and baked tomatoes stuffed with wild rice. I don't usually like the consistency of baked tomatoes. Even if they look nice? I like to save the tops. I cut a little bit more of the top off. And what I do is I will use it as a lid for presentation purposes. Love it. I'm getting a little nervous. But Dawn isn't, because after the tomatoes, all she has to do is finish the wild rice and toast some pine nuts. I've never had pine nuts. I'm hoping it doesn't taste like a pine tree. Oh, Sarah. She's a little annoying. Maybe once Sarah tastes my nuts, she'll stop talking. If you don't want lips flapping at your next dinner party, go to wnetwork.com for the recipes that will quiet the competition. My food is always delicious. If not repetitive, because last night Rick served a chowder too. Jeez Louise. Now this is going to be interesting. Didn't I just eat this yesterday? Yep. But mine is different. It's completely different. Hmm, sounds fishy. I'm using tilapia because it's a nice, light, white fish. Oh, that's much better than all that lobster Rick used. My chowder is going to be better. Tisk tisk. It's a shame that it's turning into just a comparison. Come on, Don. Just pretend that those shallots, carrots, and fennel are your guests. Kidding me? I feel so much better. 
now that I've been able to pound all my energy and my frustrations out, I, this is actually empowering me. I think Dawn's a diva. And a bit of a whiner. I'm sacrificing my good, delicious wine. Boo-hoo. But the guests might shed a tear at what else she's adding to the chowder. I throw in some vegetable garden cocktail. Why? Why? Because it's what I do. Uh, thanks for clearing that up. Oh, my God. <laughs> but Don has faith that everyone will love the other element to her appetizer, jalapeno cornbread. I think it's a good idea. I don't do well with peppers, especially hot peppers. Oops. And I'm going to make one little loaf very plain for her. Wow, two different types of cornbread. Sounds like a lot of work. I have two ovens. Actually, I have more than two ovens. There's more downstairs. Show off. I think the Dawn is rich. Yep, and her cornbread will be too, because she's mixing flour, cornmeal, salt, baking powder, 2% milk, and peppers, of course. Ta-da! Just put it in the ovens, is, is. Dawn, because you still have to make strawberry mascarpone and banana hazelnut chocolate crepes. I really, really like crepes. I love crepes. Should be tasty, yes. But we'll have to wait to find out, because Dawn's going to make them fresh just before serving. Because after all, tonight is a black tie affair. I can't say I'm surprised. I am looking forward to dressing up. I've got a nice outfit. I don't have a black tie, so I'm not wearing that. <laughs> as long as you show up. I have what it takes to win. We'll see about that. Coming up on Come Dine With Me. My dream. Wow. Don puts it into overdrive. The shoes are off. I am barefoot. And I'm rocking it. It's hump day, and Upper Crust Don is confident she's going to outclass her competition. Miss She She is going to own this one. Well, in that dress, anything is possible. Va va boom, Don. Hopefully, first guest Dustin can contain himself. Hi, come on Hi. in. How are you doing? Well, you look Good. very handsome. Nice Beautiful. to see you again. Do tell. I didn't know where to look when Don opened the door. So? I looked at her. Hopefully, next guest Eddie has more cooth. Hi, Hi, how are you? Good oh, evening. look how handsome you look. Oh, thank you. Wow. You too. She looked beautiful. Eddie, I didn't give you a short skirt, no. but I gave you... No, you gave me... I gave you a little bit of candy. Yeah. Beautiful top, yes. <laughs> Keep it together, Eddie. Unbelievable. Awesome. Beautiful. But will Sarah raise the black tie bar? Hi! Hi. A hat. Wow, Thank look you. at you. And you look so pretty. How formal. Whoops. Betcha Slick Rick will do better than a fedora. Hi! Wow! Welcome to my home. Oh, thank you, Doug. Yeah. You look great. She looked like a trillion dollars. Thank you. So do you. Oh, this old thing. I love dressing up. Who doesn't? Dustin, you didn't get the memo. <laughs> I got the memo. I wanted to look my absolute best for Don. And this is when I feel my absolute best, what I'm wearing right now. I feel really confident being inside of you. Oh, I feel Hello, really, Freud. I feel really confident wearing this beside you. So, you know. I think you look very handsome. Uh, thank you so much. But. I have a surprise for you. Oh. Ooh. Fantastic. I had no idea what to expect. Not this, I bet. Boys, come on in. Well, hello, everyone. Hello. hello. Those guys look like uh, hitmen, mafia guys. Ah, forget about it. I had no idea what it was. What do you really think is going to happen? I don't know. I thought we were getting a massage. Even better, it's hairdos. Ladies and gentlemen, the new Sarah. Here she is. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. Look at that. You look beautiful. <whistles> Sarah looked fantastic. But Rick looks even better, or maybe just taller. Yeah. Oh. I feel like I went from like 5'9 to 6 feet in three seconds flat. And my hair's gonna look even better. I am anxious to see Eddie. Post windstorm Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Eddie got caught in Hurricane Dawn. Business in the front, party in the back. He looked like a guy that just came out of a tornado. <laughs> Looks good. He looked a little ridiculous. Oh, you want ridiculous? Here comes Dustin. <laughs> he looks like a 
hairstylist. It was awesome. He looks like a different person. That's kind of the idea. How do you feel with so much hair, Dustin? This is something I've always dreamed about. This makeover gave me 10 years of my life back. And those new do's have given Don's confidence quite the boost. Competition is on. The shoes are off. I am barefoot, and I'm rocking it. We got to get this food out. Now that's what you call drive. Oh, oh my God. God, look at this. Holy God, I can't believe this. Oh. Steady Eddie. I really turned Eddie on. Yeah, I think the humping gave it away. This is my dream. Wow. I really love that car. It's like a wet dream come true. So much for heavy petting. Wow. <laughs> Jackpot. We found all of Don's furs. <laughs> We've struck gold. Don, you dirtbag. Lions and tigers and bears, oh my. I think that this one has your name written all over <laughs> it. <laughs> How frisky are you feeling? Very. That was awesome. And so much better than having fish chowder two nights in a row. Deja vu with the uh, fish chowder tonight and the uh, seafood that you served last night. <laughs> what can you do? Pick every little thing apart. These cutlery are on the wrong side of the plate. Say it isn't so. How are you really supposed to set this? Fork has four letters, and so does left. And Sneaky has six. I'm just trying to plant the seed. Well, tough noogies, because Don's soup is... Delicious! Don places jalapeno cornbread just so, a little creme fraiche, and garnish. Finally, it's ready. Don's fish chowder is ready to serve. So thank you. Oh, it was nothing. Her presentation for the soup was great. Beautiful. Well done. I'm hoping that you will enjoy this. And we have my version of a Italian Serbian seafood chowder. So prietno appetito. It's good. Actually, it's really good. I think he doth protest too much. It was bland. There's no flavors to it. It tastes very good. You've done, done a great job. Fess up, Eddie. I didn't like it too much. OK, but most importantly, what did Rick think? When I saw that you were making seafood chowder, I was a little spooked, because obviously, because I made seafood chowder last night. Yes, Rick, this we already know. What I like about your chowder is it's, it's different than any other seafood chowder I've ever had before. Meaning? Mine was better. Says you. I did like Rick's chowder better. And on that note... <laughs> oh! Sorry. I had to do one of those... That. That. That's the fish. Oh, I know. <laughs> no, it's not the fish. No, it's it's not. Eddie. Eddie's been a very bad boy. Coming up on Come Dine With Me, Don Doddles. This many labor's killing me. And Dustin divulges. Hi. I've been caught. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight, Million Dollar Don is trying to pull off a dinner party saws servants. I'm in control. Too bad Eddie isn't. Stop staring at my <laughs> in the eyes, OK? <laughs> Talk to me, Eddie. Talk to me. She's got such a great figure. She's a cougar. On the verge of a breakdown. Oh, Lord, help us all. I don't know if I can handle him tonight. I'd be more worried about getting a handle on the main. I need to move it. I need to really move it now. So Don throws on a full-length fur to turn on the barbecue, as you do. This manual labor is killing me. Ugh, if the poor people could see you now. Putting the sleeves up, I'm using my hands. Such a trooper. I like to handle my meat. Well, apparently, so does Dustin. I've been caught <laughs> <laughs> I've been caught by my brother, my sister, my mom. <laughs> the whole family has caught you? My yeah. girlfriend. All at the same time? No, no, separate times. Phew. I have to say, wow. You got a lot of free time on your hands. I... Pun intended. Have you gotten caught bumping uglies? Uh, sorry to disappoint you, but no, I've never been caught. Not buying it. What you mean is tell me that your wife has never caught you, like, watching anything inappropriate. No, we watch them together. Now there's a mental image. Ew. It was classic. <laughs> what about Sarah? I've never been caught having sex anywhere. Snore. It doesn't surprise me. <laughs> but this might. Watch out for the screen door, Don. 
<laughs> Told you. Close this. Like, really? <laughs> Sorry. Try telling that to your guests. We've been waiting for a while. Things took absolutely forever. Oh, relax. It's only been five hours. Oh, my God. It's 11 o'clock, and I haven't served dinner yet. Well, what's taking you so long? I don't like serving. I like to be served. Yeah, we can see that. Maybe Eddie and Dustin can finish up the meal? No can do. <laughs> Don loses the fur and grudgingly serves the tenderloins. I hope they like it rare. Well, if they like well done, there's always the kebabs. Everyone's only getting one score because we burnt some. But that's not the only casualty. My tomato's overcooked a little bit. Don plates her two dipping sauces, and finally, the dame is done. Don's main course is ready to serve just before midnight. Kids, I am so sorry for the late dinner. Oh, they don't mind. I was really disappointed. The night was too long. Too long. I'm dead tired. Well, try to stay awake just long enough to try the beef. Enjoy. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. I looked at the tenderloin. It looked a little red. But um, when I did start eating it, I found it very juicy. Impressive. The thing that I'm actually most impressed about is the thing that I thought I was going to hate the most is the uh, baked tomato with the uh, wild rice and pine nuts. I think that's phenomenal. So I'll give her credit for that. And credit to Sarah for going outside her comfort zone. I actually am enjoying the blue cheese sauce. I wow. know. I know. Wow. For a stinky cheese? Yeah. Good job. So it's official. Everyone likes it. Or do they? The vegetable skewer, I could take it or leave it. Really? Was it that bad? I actually forced down a bit of the vegetables. Eek! I thought the sauces were superfluous. I wish they weren't on my plate. Wow, no need to sugarcoat it. I think Rick is now worried that he has competition. Yeah, I think it's the new hair, too. My hair is higher, and so is my ego. I'll do anything to win it, and if that means screwing up her night, well, then so be it. Except Don's not going to break that easy. I can actually say that this is probably one of my toughest challenges I ever had to face. It was very difficult doing the entire meal. Yeah. From yeah. start to finish. Poor little rich girl. Oh, you've got a beautiful home, you've got beautiful cars, you've got multiple furs. It all came from love. Aww. This is not the world I was born in, but this is my world. And I don't take advantage of it. And I don't flaunt it. Except... I have been to some really exclusive shishi restaurants all over the world. Ooh. I can care less. I am really doing everything I want to do now. Because you know what's going to happen? Those three crazy ass kids of mine that I worship and adore are going to get married, mm -hmm. have babies, mm -hmm. and you know what's going to happen. I'm going to be the, the, the nanny. No, you're going to graduate from a MILF to a GILF. <laughs> what the hell is a GILF? A GILF's the grandma I like to Good to know. <laughs> I've never heard that! Coming up on Come Dine With Me, Don gets fired up. Really? It's almost 1 a.m. on night three. I want to go to sleep. But Don still has some fight. I still might win. I still might win. Yeah, because she still has one final round, her double crepe dessert. Sounds very sweet. I actually do love crepes. I'll eat crepes every Saturday. I was looking forward to the crepes. Well, they might be a while. Uh, the pan's not hot enough? Excuses, excuses. How's about now? Any better? Are you kidding me? Are you really kidding me? I don't have time for this. More work than you expected, Don? I could have whipped up a creme brulee in 15 minutes. But that's easy. Yeah, so much better to crash and burn. Really? Really. You'd make a horrible big bad wolf. Don fills one crepe with strawberry and mascarpone filling and the other with banana and hazelnut chocolate sauce. Then she folds and plops till she drops. Finally! I'm so tired. It's almost over, Don. Dessert is ready to serve. Finally! Dessert! 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 Here we go! 
presentation-wise, it was amazing. I would expect nothing less from Don. But three glasses of ice wine and two crepes? Seriously? You just need one crepe. You don't need two. Or the raspberry sauce, for that matter. The only problem with the raspberry mm -hmm. is what you got on there. You got a lot of small seeds. And they're mm -hmm. just getting all stuck in my teeth and I'm having a hard oh, time I'm chewing. Sorry. And so you should be. I think I still got one <laughs> hanging out of my tooth. One of the things I like about getting a crepe is that it's still a little warm. Because they're, they're not warm. No, I made them warm. Yeah, like two hours ago. I have to agree with Rick. I do like my crepes warm. She bit off way more than she could chew. Well, on the bright side, the kitchen is now closed. Here's to hump day, day three. It's over. Here's to us. And how happy am I that it's over. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Cheers. 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 I could actually cry now because I am so happy it's over. Far from it. I've never liked cold crepes, but I did like tonight's glamorous evening. I'm giving Dawn an eight. I'm giving her an eight. I really enjoyed dressing up, and I'm going to give Dawn an eight. Wow, three scores in, and Dawn's tied with Sarah and well within striking distance of Rick. All she needs is one more eight for a tie. Dawn, you're frazzled, giving you a seven. Oh, so close, but no cigar for Dawn, as she ends up with 31 points. There is no doubt I'm going to win. Tomorrow's my night. I can't wait. I'm going to kill it. On the next episode of Come Dine With Me... Success. Sarah gets a shock. Ah! Ah! You're not going to go blind. Don't worry. I can't see! Eddie's stewing. That's it. We're done. Is it safe to eat? It's the battle of the crappy crepes. I'm stuffing and I'm rolling. And the jig is up. Oppa! It was awesome. Nailed it. One more Four. night. Coming up on Come Dine With Me. No one would ever know that. It's from a can. Can a Hungarian dancer. Success. Waltz his way into top spot. <laughs> it looks like mealworms. As five strangers. <laughs> the hell is that? <laughs> spend five days. <laughs> I'm losing my right now. Firing it up. <gasps> Dishing it out. Oh my god, that smile. I'm throwing up in my mouth a little right now. And taking each other down. It's game over. She can either eat this chicken or I'm gonna shove it down her throat. They'll score each other in secret in an all out food fight. I really wanna win. For a thousand dollar grand prize and the bragging rights of host with the most. Winners and losers. I'm number one and you're gonna see it tonight. It's the fourth day in a week-long foodie fight, and tonight's host is hot-footed Hungarian Eddie. You want me to spell that out? No, Eddie. Us city folk can figure it out. I'm not crazy about the city. It's too busy, too loud, um, too much noise. And not nearly enough flirting. I flirt with a lady at the bank. Yeah, actually, she's not a lady. She's a, about a 23-year-old, good-looking honey. From drooling to dribbling, meet Dustin, who can't wait to get his shot at the title tomorrow night. One more day, and it's game over. Dustin may be the wild card. But Sarah's the one who should be dealt with, because at her Christmas theme party on night one, she served shots that no one could drink. Yes. It's a little, um, like cough syrup? And food no one wanted to eat. Really strange. But Sarah still thinks Santa's coming to town. Ho, 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 I'm going to win. Not likely. Because Slick Rick easily trounced Sarah's score on night two when he hosted a down-home crustacean-filled Cape Breton party. Amazing. Awesome. And earned 32 points to take the lead. I expected nothing less. And everyone had high expectations last night when Don hosted makeovers at the mansion. I felt very glamorous. Don didn't. Don was a hot mess last night. And her grapes got the cold shoulder. I would love it to be warmer. It was too much pressure. And too little to take Rick out of the lead, because Don ended up with 31 points, which brings us to Eddie. Oh, God. Eddie? <laughs> I can't wait. Rick can. Eddie is crazy. Eddie farted in front of me last night. <laughs> Good to see you don't hold a grudge. Let's talk about my menu. OK, let's. Because we've got crepes again, but this time they're being stuffed with chicken paprikash. Pap paprikash. 
Pepper, paprikash? Paprikash. I don't know what paprikash is. It's a Hungarian stewish kind of sort of that starts with onions. Lots of onions. And garlic sauteed on medium heat. Sometimes you burn things and you don't want to burn things. Wow, where's the bumper sticker people when you need them? <laughs> I'm going to add some Hungarian red paprika to my onions. No time like the present. To be honest with you, paprika repeats on me. Ah, uh, this isn't just any old paprika. I only use the best paprika, Hungarian paprika. It's a Hungarian meal. Can't get anything by Dustin. Eddie adds green pepper and chicken thighs to the pot, then adds water, tomatoes, and sets to simmer. Easy peasy. I gotta be honest with you, I didn't expect much from Eddie. But fingers crossed his crepes turn out better than Don's did last night. Wink, wink. And he can't wink his way through this competition. No, but he can be flippant. Voila. Nice one, Ed. I never expected crepes from Eddie. And you probably didn't expect another stew either. But voila, Eddie's doing it again for the main course. And anybody can make a stew. But not everyone can make it with venison. Venison is, I'm thinking, moose. Go. Venison could be bu a buck or a doe. So which is it, Eddie? It's a uh, buck. It's buck deer. Eddie probably ran over his meat. Not quite. A buddy of mine shot a, a buck a while ago, and I got the deer meat off of him. Bloody good friend, I'd say. Venison stew is risky. If you want to serve your dear friend's stew at your next dinner party, go to WNetwork.com for all of Eddie's Hungarian recipes. Smelling good and looking great, so I'm happy. And he's not the only one. Looks like someone likes my dear me, my cat. She's already pushing her, her nose up against my leg, so something's got to smell good in here. Bet you it's not the frozen tomatoes. And by the way, these tomatoes are from my garden. They're not store-bought, they're garden-bought. Uh, garden-bought. <laughs> they're not store-bought, they're from my garden. Thanks for clearing that up. I bet you Eddie's really nervous right now. Wouldn't you be too if you were serving chestnut puree to strangers? I don't really know what puree is. I give up, and obviously so has Eddie. No one would ever know that it's from a can. Sure, whatever you say. My confidence just went up. And so will your blood alcohol level, because after Eddie adds one big old scoop of prefab whipped cream, he throws in some rum. Go figure booze is in it. And there's more where that came from, because Eddie's got moonshine, too. I've been saving it for a very special occasion. Cheers to that. I'm not losing to a guy with a mullet. Suck it up, buttercup. Boom. <laughs> Let's get this show on the road. Coming up on Come Dine With Me, will the paprikash be poppycock? There was a microwavable chimichanga. It's the penultimate night in a five-day dinner party dine-off. And Fast Eddie has the table set, his Hungarian threads on, and is ready to go. I'm really excited. Careful, Edward. You might scare off small-town Sarah. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Wow, look at you. I like in the outfit. Thank you. It's Hungarian. I thought he was a pirate. Hopefully Rick's a little more astute. Hey! hey. Well Looking good. How How's you doing, it going? Good, good to see you. See you. How good? I got a little aroused. Eddie's showing me up. I Looking know. good, my friend. Looking yeah. good. Yeah, he's wearing a <clears throat> pirate outfit. I'm not Hungarian. Excuses, excuses. I'd like to get you a drink. Uh, I just thought up this Caucasian right now. Say what? Eddie called the drink a Caucasian. <laughs> Caucasian concoction, same diff. It's Caucasian, and I'm dying to know what one tastes like because my boyfriend's Filipino. Oh, oh, that, oh <laughs> high five me. Come on, that was awesome. That was a good laugh. You really need to get out more, or at least have a few more orange drinks. Will you tell me what kind of fruit's in it? Is it orange? No. Mango? No. Hate to break up this really fun game, but Dustin's arrived. Hey, Betty. Dude, oh how are you? God. Dude, you look fantastic. Right. Thank you very much. Can you dance as well? Oh, yeah. Dance, monkey, dance. Eddie's hilarious. If not a little gassy. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Better clean up your act, because Don's in the house. Hello, Don. <laughs> My <laughs> God. Surprise, surprise. Aren't you beautiful? Look at the hair. And a little bounce in her step. I was at ease because my night was over and I had an opportunity to have a good time, be a guest, 
and distract Eddie. I purposely wore a short dress so I could possibly throw his game off. Guess what? It's working. When I saw her, wow, she's just, just totally hot. Knockout. Just what I like to see in a woman: legs and a skirt. I love it. Don't you just love it when a plan comes together? I like the way he set up the bench for me here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I got you cornered, Dave. <laughs> Take a number, Eddie. I'm a gay man, and I have been for many years, but you know what? I could go live in Don's pool house any day. And miss out on Eddie's moonshine? Wow. Look this is this. my uh, palinka. Palinka. Which is Hungarian for turpentine. Eddie, I already have hair on my chest. Speaking of which. I have a hair on my glass. Oh. oh. Diva. Can I switch with you? Yes. Sorry about that. No, you aren't. I'm done with her. Meow. Here's to night four. Cheers, night four. Here's to night four. Cheers. 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 Down the hatch, kids. Mmm, moonshine. It tasted sort of like when the doctor rubs your arm before you get blood work. It tastes like ass. Whatever ass tastes like. Oh my god, did it put hair on my chest? Oh my god, did it? Oh. <laughs> Was that moonshine? Yes. I can't see! Oh my god! <laughs> Take it easy, Meryl Streep. That's Sarah, and you know, you just gotta love her. Try telling Dustin that. Sarah's annoying at me. Then while Eddie heads to the kitchen to shred his chicken and the dance floor, why don't you and your boo check out Edward's boudoir? I've got like a mini crush on Dustin. Then this just may be the perfect trap. Oh my God. <laughs> See this? Dustin speechless? Who knew? I was at a loss for words. Look at this thing. Look, it still has its claws in it. What the hell is going on here? Why don't you ask the coyote? Look at that. Let's do this. Do you think that Eddie killed these? I probably think Eddie did kill these. I bet you he killed them and stuffed them. At least he didn't freeze them. What, what's in what's this bag? That? Best leave it alone, Don. Shh, shh, let's do this. Are you ready? Sarah? Ready? No. No, it's Eddie's freezer. So how bad could it really be? Oh my god! What the hell is that? I had no idea what the hell was in that bag. It's a pike. A monster pike. It's ugly. It Look literally like it could just like and, and pretty much bite you. Do you know what fishermen do? No. They say kiss the ah, fish. No, 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 Great. Now she's got fish breath. You're really freaking me out. Put it back in the okay. bag. Okay. That's okay. just that's just wrong. Then whatever you do, don't look on the stove. Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh! Weird. But then again, you are at Eddie's house. Almost time. Almost time to serve that appetizer. Yep. All it needs now is a squiggle of sour cream and the biggest garnishes ever. I know they're gonna love it. Fingers crossed, because Eddie's chicken paprikash stuffed crepes are ready to serve. Ooh. Ooh. Look at this. Uh, and he's serving last night's crepe maker first. The appetizer looked very lonely on the plate. The presentation was garbage. This is called in Hungarian hort hortoi polenchita. Horto chalapi chalapita. Horto baiji. Not quite. I don't know, some Hungarian word. Fine, just eat. And enjoy. Or at least try to, for Eddie's sake. You're full of surprises. Yeah, thank um, you. Um, I like your crepe. Ole! It was a microwavable chimichanga. Hungarian style. The chicken really works with the, uh, with the crepe here. I'm gonna look a little bit more kick, or a little bit more, uh, just a little bit, there's something missing. Like maybe paprika? I got none. Which could be a good thing. I actually don't do well with uh, red paprika. And thank you so much. It's not overkill. I find it very tasty. Really? It was a little dry. Then why did Dustin say it worked? I love Eddie, so I didn't want to I didn't want to be mean to him. Sarah doesn't seem to mind. I'm kind of finding my crepe a little bit doughy, I think. Of course you do. Like usual, Sarah had an overreaction. Nothing you can do but grin and bear it. Eddie's yeah. got a bear. What? Like a bear. bear. Like a, a bear spread bear. eagle. Bear. A bear spread eagle on the floor. <laughs> As you do. Have you ever laid on it? Laid? Or been laid, laid on it? Been laid on? Please, people are trying to eat. Going naked on it and rolling on it, it's, it's quite yourself? erotic. 
guess the appetizer's over. You got a mustache and a mullet and a bear rug. Just picture it. Trust me, I can. Coming up on Come Dine With Me, Eddie Spills and Dawn Thrills. It's Hungarian night at Eddie's, and he's about to make dumplings. What's going to be in the dumpling? Well, considering they're egg dumplings, eggs would be a safe bet. I thought eggplant. I, I honestly thought eggplant. Yeah, because I thought egg. Huh? I kind of thought that maybe when I saw egg, he'd be using eggplant. Eh, wrong. I'm giving it a twist. And dust and a headache. <sighs> it has nothing to do with an eggplant. Eddie adds a teaspoon of oil to the batter. It gives the noodles bounce. Bounce? Like a bounce, like that, yeah. Yeah. Eddie cuts teeny tiny dumplings into the water, strains them. Success. Plates, burps. Uh, yeah. And then covers with his venison stew. And not a lick of garnish. The main course is ready to serve. All over Dawn. Uh-oh, Dawn has soup in her hair. Now it's a party. A little venison never hurt anyone. Thank you so much. For so very little. It looked terrible. It was stew on egg noodles. It's a hard thing to present. Let alone pronounce. This is Uzi Perto. Uzi Perto. Uzi Percot. Uzi Perto. I have a little. I need your little. Uzi. Uzi Perto. Uzi Perto. AKA venison stew and egg dumplings. I wasn't sure, Eddie, what you meant by egg dumpling. Except that they weren't going to be eggplant. I'm really happy with the consistency of it. But the seasoning, not so much. You know, it was a little bland, but the... then I realized, you know, when you mix it together with the venison and with the sauce, like, it brings, uh, it brings life to the dish. Like, it actually brings everything together. And for once, he's not even lying. It wasn't bad, actually. Uh, the venison? Yes, what about it? Very nice. It's not gamey at all. Phew. And my question to you is, is it wild venison or is it um, farm-raised? No, this is wild. Wild. I have a friend who, uh, who shot the deer. Likely story. Eddie likes crossbows and he likes to kill snakes. And Don likes to lecture. Had you slightly attempted to marinate it, it would have been a little juicier. Uh, where's Eddie's friend with a gun when you need him? It's a little tough. And it's a, it's a little um, dry. Like you? I liked how malicious she was. I'm a huge game cooker. Of course you are. So shut the hell up. Because Picky Princess with a pile of peppers on her plate is prepared to pounce. Unfortunately, the, the spiciness that's in my mouth right now is the part that, uh, that's kind of burning a little bit. You don't need to push those aside because those are not hot peppers. That is a sweet green pepper. <laughs> Busted. Unfortunately, any pepper, hot, green, red, yellow, it will not agree with me. Unfortunately. Sarah wouldn't know a good piece of food if it bit her in the face. I'm going to have probably heartburn for the rest of the night. Kind of wish I didn't have any peppers because I'm still tasting them. Oh, stop being so rigid. How flexible are you? Beg your pardon? How flexible is your body? Yep, just what I thought you said. You're kidding me? Like, what are you ever going to ask that at a dinner party to someone that you've only known for four days? I can put my legs behind my head. Surprise, surprise. Yeah, <laughs> like, how did you discover that skill? I would go to bed, and I'd pick up my feet, and I used to bite my toenails. And I realized, wow, look at that. And then I, I, I could, I would just, just for and giggles, I pick up my leg and put it behind my neck. Has that ever benefited you in other ways? Uh, as I got older, I found it was an asset. Yes, yes of, course of course it was, was an asset. As, oh as, my god. Yeah. I wasn't at all surprised. I mean, how else do you acquire so many exotic cars? Eddie knows. Ready? I can do that too. What the f That was nothing. <laughs> That's nothing. Oh my. It's not like a sword that he made disappear that was 12 inches or two feet long. Oh, did you even read the back of a sword? I was like, you kidding me? <laughs> and I suppose you can do better. I'm gonna do a spoon. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Amateurs. Don, show them how it's done. Uh. Oh! oh my God! You're the best. Oh, 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 oh my god. Don, you are a worthy adversary. I didn't even know. I didn't even.
can try. Woo! Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Kudos, girl. That was, uh, that's a real talent. Coming up on Come Dine With Me, <laughs> Eddie groans and Rick moans. It looks like mealworms. <laughs> Tonight, making sure his guests don't go hungry... Pun intended. ...has left Eddie feeling footloose and fancy-free. Success. Yes. Thank you. That may be a little premature, Eddie, because you've still got chestnut puree to serve. I learned to make this at home from my mom. It doesn't sound like a dessert. It sounds like a drink. Oh, if only that were so. Eddie squirts on some whipped cream, and with an ironic cherry on top, dessert is ready to serve. You're beautiful girls. Oh. Isn't it lovely? It looked like fish bait. Or... Little small worms. Even better. It's like when you leave ground beef in the fridge for weeks, and it turns gray. It's like you threw that in a, in a, a Sunday glass, and then you put whipped cream on top of it. This is called gastinia puree. Translation, please. Gustanya puree means throw up in your mouth mealworms. Oh well, here's hoping it tastes better than it looks. Your dessert is yeah. delicious. Do I smell a butt? It looks like mealworms. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you just look down on from the top, it's not as bad. Yeah, that's not gonna help. Okay, it looks like I've opened up a decomposing corpse. Don't knock it till you tried it. And now that you've tried it. I'm thinking that Hungarian food is just not my style. Oh, I think we're way past worrying about style. You made the whipped cream on top. Yes, I did. No. Uh, no, I'm sorry. No, I did not. No, I did not. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I can that. taste yeah, it. Yeah, okay. No, no I did I not. Yeah, it's not real no. whipped cream. No, no I did no. not. And go on. Not so fast. Liar. His whipping cream came in a can. It's a little, it's a little like uh, delicious. Uh, I want to say dry. Yes, you do. It tastes like cardboard. It tastes like carpet. It tastes like anything what it was supposed to taste like. Did you start with a chestnut? I didn't have enough time. But so you bought them in a bag. I, no, I bought it in a can. Leave canned in cans. And leave the entertainment to Eddie. I would like to perform a dance for you. Yay! Hop, 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 hop! Go, Eddie. Go, Eddie. Go, 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 Eddie. Amazing. This is amazing. Amazing might be an understatement. Watching Eddie dance was like spotting a unicorn in the forest. And it's even better when you join in. I felt like I was, you know, part of the family. I wined them, I dined them, and I danced them, and I danced my little heart out. But will it get broken? The food wasn't amazing, but I had an amazing time. Therefore, I give Eddie a seven. Eddie, I love you, but it's not enough. You're getting a seven. Eddie did not impress me. I'm giving him a six. I loved Eddie. Great hosting, seven. So Eddie dances his way into third place with a so-so score of 27. And with only one more night to go, everyone's feeling the heat. I really want to win tomorrow. I would love to see the look on their faces when I turn around and divide the prize money amongst the five of us. Dustin better wow me tomorrow. Otherwise, I'm taking this home. Well, he's got another thing coming. Let's do this. Let's yeah. Yeah. On the next episode... Tonight might take us anywhere. It's the final night. Bring it on, Dustin. Will Dustin bite the dust? Because I'm losing my right now. Or will everyone kiss and make up? Oh, Lord, help us all. Mwah. Coming up on Come Dine With Me... This is what winners do. But I won't be doing this. I'll be getting somebody else to do this for me. Will the cock of the walk... cockle doo doo, -doo. ...be run ragged? Don't make your problem my problem. Why are you throwing me under the bus right now? As five strangers <laughs> what the hell is that? Ah! Oh. spend five days I'm losing my right now. Firing it up. <gasps> dishing it out. Oh my god, that's vile. I'm throwing up in my mouth a little right now. <laughs> and taking each other down. It's game over. They'll score in secret in an all-out food fight. I, am... I really want to win for a $1,000 grand prize and the bragging rights of host with the most. Winners and losers, cheers to me winning.
Attaboy. It's the final night in a week-long dinner party battle, and the shot clock is winding down for Dustin and his warped sense of humor. If a friend of mine falls down, or say what a male friend of mine gets hit in the nuts, like gets hit in the nuts, it's funny, and I'll smile, and I'll laugh. Charming. We have a lot in common. Indeed, because Sarah's full of hot air, too, especially since on night one, she fibbed about her aerosol whipped cream. It's all made by hand. Lying at a fake Christmas party in July, what nerve. I really, 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 really want to win. So Sarah's going to be really, 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 really disappointed when she finds out she only scored 24 points. I simply cannot lose to Sarah. I would probably throw up in my mouth. Don't worry, you don't have to, because on night two, everyone raved about Rick's East Coast shindig, complete with seafood chowder and blueberry grunt. My food was far superior. And so was his score. Rick easily beat Sarah and took the lead with 32 points. I don't give a rat's ass who wins. That's because Dawn almost gave up on night three after deciding that her blood was just too blue to cook for four people by herself. This manual labor is killing me. I have no words to describe this competition. I have one. It's loser. Dawn ended up in second place with 31 pity points. Dawn's my favorite. I really like her. I think she's hot. Which is why Eddie tried to impress her last night with moonshine and a hearty venison stew that sent simple palate Sarah reeling. That's kind of burning a little bit. I feel sorry for her boyfriend. She's a pain in the ass. But Eddie kicked her in it with his epic Hungarian folk dancing. I'm hoping for nines and tens. Let's try sixes and sevens, giving Eddie a total score of 27 points, which brings us to tonight's party at Dustin's house. As long as Don's wearing a skirt, I'll go anywhere. Trust me, she'll be there. My strategy is to expose all of Dustin's faults this evening. I will identify them one after another. Bang, 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 bang. Gonna hit the fan. That is, if it doesn't hit the plate first, because Dustin's serving cornbread with collard greens to accompany his buttermilk fried chicken. Who doesn't love buttermilk fried chicken? Oh, probably Sarah. I'm not a big fried foods kind of person. It smells buttery and milky. That doesn't sound complicated to make. Because it isn't. You just season with garlic, cayenne pepper, and paprika, which all gets mixed together. But I'm making sure that some of the chicken has a chance to be on the bottom, and some of the chicken has a chance to be on the top. Sexy. Some people like the bottom, some people like the top. I like the bottom. Not because I'm a bottom, more of a top. Can we just get back to the chicken, please? Me, 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 me. My name is Dustin, and it's me, me, me. Uh-oh, looks like the battle of the divas in more ways than one. Because Dustin's whipping up a batch of cornbread, which Dawn served on her night, too. I don't consider that really, like, proper cornbread. Really, Dustin? Yes, really, Dawn. So that's good. I don't need to do that anymore. I don't even need to compete anymore. Hmm. No, I think I haven't beat. You might if he doesn't stop goofing around with his collard greens. Collard? Collard. I have no idea what a collard green is. Of course you don't. I don't really like collard greens. So, not a fan? This is what winners do. This is what winners do. But I won't be doing this. I'll be getting somebody else to do this for me. FYI, I wouldn't ask Don. I do not want to lose to Dustin. Just because of his Mr. Know-it-all attitude. Oh, I would have guessed it was because he's making gingerbread pumpkin trifle for dessert. I've never had trifle. Shocker! <laughs> Dustin starts the gingerbread cake by blending together sugar and eggs, adds molasses, and blends again. It looks delicious. It smells really good, too. And then in a separate bowl, Dustin mixes flour, baking soda, and ground cinnamon. I don't know if you guys have ever tried this trick. You give your friends a teaspoon of cinnamon, and you ask them if they can swallow it. Just one teaspoon. It's hilarious. Sure, if you're 10. I don't like cinnamon. Hopefully, you like ground ginger, cloves, and salt. Dustin adds his wet ingredients to the dry, mixes, and adds one cup of boiling water. This sounds very strange. And looks even worse. This looks like crap. This looks like diarrhea. Ew. My hopes are that Dustin crashes and burns tonight. Hate to break it to you, but the gingerbread sponge is looking great and tastes even better. It's moist. It's delicious. Then just wait till it's added to the pumpkin cream. I hate pumpkins. Who said anything about pumpkins? Where are you getting your pumpkin from? A can? Pretty much. 
This is the only way I know how to do it. I've never made pumpkin puree myself. Dustin mixes the puree up with vanilla pudding made from a box. But at least he manages to make his own whipped cream. Sarah. I actually am feeling a little pressure right now. Dustin layers his dessert into bowls and tops with ginger snaps. And it would just be foolhardy not to make your own. Dustin. No, I didn't bake these cookies at all. Uh-oh. If they ask me, I bake these cookies. If you think shortcuts take the biscuit, then don't go to wnetwork.com, where you'll find all of Dustin's recipes online. That's it. Dessert's done. And it's appetizer time. Bacon-wrapped stuffed watermelon. Stuffed with what? With crab. I'm awfully curious to see how he's going to pull that off. Well, here's a hint. He's going to buy crab. I'm looking for some crab. What do you, uh, what can you uh, bring to the table? Crab. I have some uh, snow crab from uh, East Coast. Sounds good. My family's from uh, Cape Breton, so... He doesn't care. I am definitely going to ask Dustin if he shelled his own crab. Uh, can you keep it down? The man's busy. cockle doo doo, -doo. Are you done? Yep, he's finally shelling. Getting in there and getting that meat. Finally getting out of that shell. It's like working for a hot girl or working for any kind of girl, really. You know, you gotta put the effort in. And then usually it doesn't pay off. It could be rotten, but... OMG. You're like watermelon face right there. Grow up. I've touched so many people's food tonight. Dustin puts crab in the watermelon hole, wraps the bacon he licked, and holds them together with a toothpick. Pick our teeth after, right? Sure, why not? Dustin will broil the appetizer just before serving, so until then, he is D-U-N done. I feel super confident right now. Absolutely super confident. Join the club. Dustin's gonna be sad tonight when I leave his house a thousand dollars richer. Let's get ready to rumble. This is not my first rodeo. Bring it, Dustin. Coming up on Come Dine With Me, it's bottoms up. Let's do this. To taking Dustin down. My bacon is not cooked enough. Payback is a bitch. It's the final night, and Dustin is ready to rumble. I feel really confident. I think I have this in the bag. Funny. That's exactly what first guest Rick thinks, too. Hey, how hey, you doing? How's it going? Good. Come good on in. My chances are very good. Unlike your host gift, Let's see what Rick brought me here. What is it? What is it? I brought him an empty wine bottle. I would spin on it. How forward? You mean connotation behind us? He wants to kiss. That's cool. Wasn't supposed to be. I thought it might freak him out a little because I'm gay and he's not. Yet. Do you think we'll hang out after it's all said and done? Like, you know? <laughs> That's a good question, yeah. I think that would be really fun if we did. That's sweet. I don't buy it. But will simple Sarah fall for the nice guy act? Hi. Sarah, how are you doing? Give me a hug. Hello. Good. Oh, you smell great. And look even better. Hey, why not a little bling bling? Well, enjoy it while it lasts, Sarah, because you're about to be out sparkled. Hi, how are you? Hey, nice Firefox. to see you again. She said sarcastically. Coming in here on day five, I would myself because you know what? I thought Dustin was my biggest competitor. And Eddie's her biggest fan. Eddie. Hi. Hey. How are you? Don. Dawn? That's not Dawn. I know I look like her and smell like her, but I'm Dustin. And that girl over there, she's Sarah. Look, if you asked Eddie to pick Sarah from the police lineup, it would never happen. Can you blame him? You look awesome. Do you guys, do you guys realize? Beautiful. This, what a beautiful uh, smile. Thank you. Matches that dress. <laughs> I'm talking to her. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. This may yeah. be the very last time that you two uh, actually see each other. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> I'm going to end up with a stalker. I'd like to have a toast. To competition. Cheers! Cheers! To competition and a foolproof plan. It's all gonna unfold exactly the way I want it to. Because the same mastermind that came up with cooking bacon-wrapped watermelon has also snoop-proofed his pad. You know what? Let's see what's in here. I wouldn't if I were you. <laughs> Claire, right? <laughs> What the hell is that? Dustin's attempt at humor. And we didn't fall for his dollar store speaker. Don. Oh, Are ah. you scared, Don? Oh, my God. Eddie, save me. Like for reals? I pull better pranks when I kick my mother's stomach from the womb. The joke was useless. Oh, I don't know, because it's gotten Rick fired up. I'm really thirsty tonight. You know, at every single one of our dinner parties, he would sit there and say, no, no, don't, don't pour your own glass of wine. Don't, don't, that's the job of the host. So you know what? Let's see. Commence Operation Drain em. Come on, Sarah, you can do it. Why not last night? And you're about to eat bacon broiled watermelon. 
It doesn't even look appetizing. Hey, you said it. Small potatoes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill him. I'm gonna blow it, blow him away with this uh, this dessert. Dessert? No, not even. Well, flusters. See, I'm about to fluster right now. <sighs> Let's take a breath. Dustin's crab stuffed watermelon wrapped in bacon is ready to serve. This is my app that I'm taking a chance with. For you. I got one for you. Thank you. Ooh. Right back with yourself, Eddie. Is that a good ooh? <sighs> Guess not. But it could be worse. <sighs> Man down. I felt bad for him. Is that a hair in your meal right there? Yeah, I dropped mine on the floor. And now that we've got that straight. Bon appetit. Really? I have to eat this? Nope, not if you don't want to. But Rick is, and so is Eddie. And look, even Dawn's trying it. Way to take a stand, Sarah. Sarah's a bit of a sheep. But will she think the appetizer is bad? So I've never had anything quite like this before. I uh, was a little leery about the watermelon. It was something different. Meaning? It tasted kind of gross, to be honest with you. I find that it does clash because the, the uh, bacon is salty, and then you got something sweet like watermelon. So you liked it? No, I did not like it. Well, the melon and the bacon, I, I totally got from the beginning. And the crab was sort of the new element for me. A good element? It was overcooked. I cook crab all the time. That was not impressive. The most challenging thing with it is not drying out the watermelon but making the bacon crispy. Yeah, about that. I feel that my bacon is not cooked enough. So picky. Would you eat raw bacon? Good point. But I did get a crispy piece of bacon. I think she just got a bad piece of bacon because everyone's looked yeah. pretty good except Don's. Maybe if you had uh, par-cooked it, that would have been absolutely fantastic. The three ingredients that I put on that plate are three things that I absolutely love to eat. It's not to say it's ours. You didn't get me. The main reason why I made this dish, I wanted to put myself out there. Don't make your problem my problem. Why are you throwing me under the bus right now? It's called karma. Dustin's been critical all week long. Payback is a bitch. And so is Dustin. I'm giving you a big glass of wine right now. Oh, dear. Oh, wow. Oh, dear. You're going to back up the dock. Yeah. You wanted a drink tonight? Let's do this. You just don't do that. Do what? You never fill up a f glass of wine. That's the worst way to insult anyone. You've got to be kidding. You want a party tonight? This is so, like... Classy? Wrong. Bad move, Dustin. Who cares? Apparently, Dustin does. Like, this floor right now, pretend it's a dog, because that's how I really feel. But I'm not going to do that, because this is my home. And I don't want to my own floor. Makes sense. Coming up on Come Dine With Me, the chicken's frying and Dustin's crying. I got tried so hard today. Like, I went really at it. Dustin, go yourself. It's the final day of the competition and tensions are running high. I poured that glass because I was angry at you. I was upset. You're upset with me? I was overconfident of coming into the day and I poured that glass because it was in spite of you. I thought you were throwing me under the bus. You almost started crying. Like, I tried so hard today. Like, I went really at it, you know? I know. Yeah, so and... did I. You're going to make me cry. <laughs> this is so touching. But you know what? Dustin, go yourself. So cold. It's a tactic. It's that we will feel bad. And, and I don't feel bad. bad. I really thought he was being sincere. He's genuine. Suckers. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wanted to cry. Like, I wanted to look like I was crying. So she would feel like, you know? Because I want her to feel like I want her to feel like flat out I want her to. I want her to feel terrible. Then best blow her mind with some awesome chicken, which Dustin dredges in seasoned flour. But I got thighs and I got uh, drumsticks here. And pops into boiling oil. I'm happy with this. So is Eddie. That's right up my alley. Douse anything in a pot of fat. People are bound to enjoy it. Great minds think alike. Dustin butters up his collard greens and the cornbread. Let's just get this on the table. Dustin's artery-clogging main course is ready to serve. To Rick and Dawn. <laughs> Ladies first. There you go. Thank you, Dawn. That was bold. Love it. And you know what else you're going to love? A properly poured glass of wine. Thank you very much. Oh, this no is perfect. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I'm very appreciative. For sucking up. I broke Dustin like a wild Mustang. But will his soul food main course get him back in the saddle? 
I've got no complaints with your dish. Yay! The um, fried chicken is yeah. very good and very tasty. Thank you. I really like it. But what about the collard greens? I didn't know what a collard green was. It kind of reminds me of a bit of the spinach. It's not spinach. The spinach or Colorado greens. Collard greens. Which I consider to be spinach really threw me off. You did a good job. Good enough to win over Diva Dawn. This was just like a party in my mouth. Steady Eddie, she's talking about the chicken. It was crispy and juicy, and uh, I'm gonna pick it up and probably chow down on the bones. It, it, I, I loved your chicken. The chicken was to die for. But the jury's still out on the cornbread. You criticized Don's cornbread for being crumbly. I did. So time to turn the tables. I'm sorry. Here we go. Brace yourself, D-Man. There was a little too much flour for me. But then again, Don does have high standards. My first impression was, when I saw you, you were stunning. Like, you're absolutely beautiful. But you're the antithesis of any person I would ever hang out with. When you showed up to my door, I was so scared that I wouldn't do enough to impress you. Oh, no. This is the yeah. way God oh, made me. Yeah, absolutely. This is the way I was born. I, yeah. I'm, if anything, I have been handicapped all my life. Handicapped? Stigma is, oh my God, look at her. She's hot, she's got great hair, she's got a great body. Are you kidding me? It's not my fault that You're I'm gorgeous. pretty. <laughs> yeah. You know, like really, yeah, really, I mean, this is the way It's God... the cross you bear, John. It's really tough being fabulous and wealthy. Coming up on Come Dine With Me, the winner is revealed. And the winner is... It's mine, baby. It's the final night, and up next is Dustin's Pumpkin Cream Trifle with gingerbread sponge cake topped with gingerbread crumbled cookies. I have our last dessert of the week. I'm about to serve. And not a moment too soon. The dessert looks awesome. And not trifling at all. I still don't know what a trifle is. It's the pumpkin dessert you're eating, genius. Yeah, I hate pumpkin. Pumpkin pies are just... Look at that, and they should be all burned. Okay, so now we know how Eddie feels. What about Sarah? I feel like I'm eating a piece of pumpkin pie. I love pumpkin pie, and I've never had trifle. Of course you haven't. What a shocker. Did you make the whipped cream yourself? The whipped cream was from scratch. That's true. The pumpkin pie filling is from scratch. Right out of the can. The vanilla pudding is from scratch. It's from a box. The gingerbread cookies are from scratch. No, they aren't. Wow. Everything in this dish is homemade. Wink, wink. Kudos to you, Dustin. But can he fool Rick? It all tastes really natural. Yeah, I believe you with that you made it from scratch. You. you shouldn't. What kind of pan did you use? Because when I make homemade cookies, I don't get these V grooves. And to me, this is like almost looking like a, uh, it came out of, a, out of a bag. I baked the cookies in a sheet. An imaginary sheet. Liar! Liar, pants on fire. I have a cookie cutter. Right. That's what made that, that's what made that groove that you're looking at right uh, now. No, it's actually the underside of my baked cookie. And, and if you want to take a look at that, I just want to know how you got that pattern in the underside of my cookie. Busted! Top to bottom from scratch. Ish. Cookie crushed on top was store-bought. And you know what? I'm willing to bet my last nickel on it. I put a lot of work into this this morning. <laughs> like, a lot of work into this. And I you know, there's an easy way to solve this problem. Why don't you just show us show the pan? Show me the pan. Yeah. Yeah, but I could have said that all week about your dishes, but I didn't call that out at all. Just show us the pan. If I were to show you that pan, are you going to give me $1,000? We're not going to give you $1,000, but we might feel like an asshole. Like, how are you going to know what pan is Well, either pan? the pan has the grooves or it doesn't. It, it doesn't. I did tell him I made everything from scratch. It didn't. Then you better kiss up. I enjoy great food Monday through Friday. Great company. Great entertainment. Cut the bull and let's cheers. Here's to the week! Here's to the week. Woo! Let's do this. Let's do this. I completely got this right now. I think it's neck and neck. Could be anybody's game. I will not lose to Sarah. The competition is between me, Dawn, and Dustin. It's mine, baby. All right. All right. OK, in last place, oh, we wait. have 
Sarah. Oh. Sarah. In a tie for third. What? R. What? Eddie and Dustin. <laughs> and in second place is Don. <laughs> So in the end, the crooked cook got panned. Dustin, your cookie crumbled. I give you a six. I don't trust that cookie. I'm giving him a seven. Sorry, Dustin. Better luck next time. I'm giving you a seven. And giving Dustin a seven. I won. <laughs> I think the better man won this competition. I don't know if he really deserved it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was an experience done. Bucket list over next. I didn't come in last place. I'm not a total loser. This goes to Rick, the winner. Yeah!